Former White House counsel Pat Cipollone testified behind closed doors Friday to the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack. Scott McFarland has the latest from Capitol Hill. Outside the meeting room, Pat Cipollone wouldn't answer reporters' questions. Did you discuss pardons, sir, and members of Congress who asked for them? But the big question is, how much did he answer inside? In a day-long session with the House January 6th committee, more than a week after he was subpoenaed, and after former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson testified, Cipollone warned on January 6th Trump would face criminal exposure if he went to the Capitol. We're going to get charged with every crime imaginable. Committee members told CBS News they expected Cipollone to testify about what he witnessed firsthand January 6th. Is it? Tricky for a White House counsel to answer questions from a congressional panel? It is very, uh, very tricky. Richard Painter was a member of the White House counsel's office for former President George W. Bush and said Cipollone might invoke privilege if asked directly about warning Trump about possible crimes. Uh, this is a very uh, difficult situation uh, that Congress will have to handle uh, with a substantial amount of delicacy in order to get the information uh, that they need without invading unduly on the attorney-client privilege. Meanwhile, police in Virginia have just released body camera video of the search on the home of Trump Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark last month. Can I call my lawyer? Sure. Uh, Come on outside and do it. Clark has also been a focus of the January 6th committee amid allegations he was part of an attempted 11th hour shakeup in the Justice Department, which would have made him the acting U.S. Attorney General. And he was the focus of a previous committee hearing. The Justice Department wouldn't comment on the search. Scott joins us now with more from Capitol Hill. Scott, at Tuesday's hearing, will investigators reveal new evidence that links the main seditious conspiracy cases to individuals close to former President Trump? Yeah, that is the overarching question, Catherine. What connective tissue is this committee prepared to draw between the mob and the far-right groups that were mobilizing that mob, allegedly, and any of the other players in this investigation, including those referenced at previous hearings, we know Tuesday's public hearing will address the movement of the mob and domestic violence extremists and how they played a role, how the alleged seditious conspirators played a role. But what lines will the committee draw Tuesday to others, perhaps others, perhaps others in positions of power? That's the question that is the underpinning of what we'll watch Tuesday as it plays out. Based on our reporting here at CBS News, this is the largest federal criminal case in U.S. history. What does the new data from the Justice Department tell us about the scope and the numbers? That it's going to get a lot larger. Here are the numbers as of tonight. 840-plus federal defendants, but the U.S. Justice Department says expect another 250 to 350 arrests minimum. And a lot of those people they're targeting are people accused of assaulting or resisting police, which makes them high-level cases. As of tonight, about a third of those who've been charged so far have pleaded guilty or had their case closed. But I'll note this, Catherine, every January 6th defendant who's gone before a jury here in the District of Columbia has been convicted on all counts. Scott McFarland, thank you.